The new Tesla Model 3 has, it's got impressive, really, really impressive efficiency. In fact, the truth is that all Tesla EVs have very impressive efficiency, but the Model 3, even better, especially the new Highland version. However, there is still a long way to go. And I didn't realize just how far we have to go until I saw this electric car with a battery only 25% the size of a battery in a Model 3 do 1,000 kilometers of range without charging. 1,000 kilometers, uh, this is not a fake story. This actually is real. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Would love to see you this Saturday. Looking forward to it. As many of you, you as possible at The Electric Car Show in Melbourne. It'll be the biggest electric car show in Australian history. Let's make, let's make history. Let's make this a huge event. It's going to be actually thousands of people I've heard um, it's got to be unprecedented number of people. Now, the crazy thing is Australia hasn't had a motor show for many years. However, we've just had a big EV show in Sydney, fully charged. Now we're having an even bigger EV show in Melbourne. So make sure you're down there to see that one. I should have a few more free tickets. I've already given out 100, but I should have a few more free ones. In fact, I've given out a few more than 100. So email me, contact at theelectricviking.com. I may not be able to get to you right away. I'm still waiting on some codes for those. But send me an email and I should be able to get those to you before the event is on, or at least before I'm at the event on Saturday this week. Despite being powered by a battery, about 25% of the battery size in a Tesla Model 3, this EV just set a new driving range record. It did 1,000 kilometers of range, which is insane. Now, of course, it was hypermiling, but even hypermiling, this number is ridiculous. A team of German students have set this record. In fact, they covered 2,600 kilometers of range. 2,600. So the previous record before this EV was 1,000 kilometers. Then this one comes along. Somehow it does 2,600 kilometers on a battery, which is minuscule. In fact, it's about the size of a Tesla Powerwall battery. You might be thinking, oh, there's some trick going on here. It must have used solar panels and just kind of kept driving with the sun really slowly. But um, no, it didn't. In fact, it doesn't have any solar panels. This team called Too Fast Eco is composed of students from the Technical University of Munich, and they built this single seat EV with the intention of breaking the record. The previous benchmark apparently by this team was 1,608. They came back and proved the car and broke this new number, 2,600 kilometers, which is just mind blowing. Conducted in a hangar at Munich airport, the previous record fell after four days of driving this car. So they had to drive for a long way, but keep in mind, 2,600 kilometers, it would take a long time to drive that distance, even if you were going fast. After 99 hours of driving across six days, the car ran out of charge and made the new world record with 2,573.8 kilometers driven, 1,000 kilometers more than the previous record. The new record is about 1,900 kilometers greater than the longest driving range of any road legal electric car currently on sale here in Australia. That title was held by the Polestar 2 long range single motor that does 654 kilometers of range. So, the longest range EV you can buy, 654 kilometers, has a battery pack that's more than four times the size of this battery. You're probably thinking, yeah, but then those cars are bigger. That's true, but I think this still proves my point. Efficiency with EVs. There's still a lot of things that could be done to massively improve range. So what can those possibly be? Well, first of all, the Polestar 2 uses an 82 kilowatt hour battery. Now the battery pack in this mini, well, this one single seater EV is the size of 15.5 kilowatt hours. So it's actually, what's that? Like one fifth the size of the battery in the Polestar 2. One fifth the size and it did 2,600 kilometers. Uh, my mind is still trying to compute these numbers because they're just so insane. The team said the car weighs only 170 kilos without a driver. So Obviously, you want to have a fairly small and lightweight driver. The Polestar 2 weighs 2,000 kilos or around about 4,200 pounds. Now, we don't know exactly how fast it was driven, but it only averaged a 26 kilometer an hour 
speed over that distance. So you can see why it took so long to make the record. And it's true that EVs will give you more range if you drive them slower. Uh, what's the sweet spot for an EV? I've heard it's around about 50 to 60 kilometers an hour. If you're doing 100 kilometers an hour, if you're doing say more than 60 miles or more, of course your efficiency will be lower. The faster you go, the lower it is. Anyway, slow is the go if you want to get more range. So if you're out driving somewhere and you're thinking, oh no, I'm a long way from a charger, uh, just drive it to someone's house, ask them if you can plug into their house. No, I'm kidding. You could do that. Or you could just drive really slow. That will massively improve your range. Despite the low driving speed, the car was built to be aerodynamically as efficient as possible. CD was 0.159, which is amazing. The most, the most aerodynamically efficient EV you can buy right now has a CD of 0.20. This electric car driving range record comes after a Swiss team of students set a record of 0.95 seconds, so less than a single second to do 62 miles an hour or 100 kilometers an hour. That's not with a rollout. Insane. Now, you'd have to have a really strong stomach not to just throw up. I personally would just throw up immediately if I was thrown at that sort of speed. What kind of speed exactly is it? Well, it's a G-force of 2.96 Gs, three times that of the driver's own body weight. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how the guy didn't throw up, but anyway, either way, this is incredible. What a time to be alive. Electric cars are doing some staggering things. This technology, of course, will eventually filter over into today's electric cars. Of course, EVs are incredibly fast. We already know that. We've just seen insane power numbers that just continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger from newer EVs. But the efficiency here is the key. Of course, one of the key things that manufacturers are doing is they're lowering cars to get better efficiency. That's how you can get better efficiency, making smaller wheels, encouraging people to buy smaller wheels. That'll get you better efficiency, new tires, better efficiency. But I think one of the big keys here is lowering your car. So air suspension, in my opinion, will make a drastic difference to the range of EVs. Being able to lower your car on the freeway to the lowest like logical position. And then, of course, heighten it for other driving, getting over driveways, maybe even off-road driving, something like the Cybertruck, how it can go really, really high. In my opinion, that's the future of EVs or more, or more expensive EVs when they want to get more range. That's one of the ways you can do it. Now, the other way that's really cool to improve range is by having a heated seatbelt. Heating yourself with a seatbelt is actually significantly more efficient than heating the entire seat or heating the entire car, which is really, really bad for your efficiency. Of course, it's, you know, it's nothing compared to running the air con, but that's another thing you can do. Ventilated seats, Obviously, the new Tesla Model 3 has those for a reason. It improves the efficiency of the car using ventilated seats. It's a lot better than running your air conditioning. Now, one other question that people have been asking me is, what about opening your windows? Is it better if you want to save money on fuel to open your windows and turn off your air conditioning? Well, the answer is yes and no. Now, if you're driving at a speed of up to around 60 to 70 kilometers an hour, yes, opening your windows makes sense. If you're driving at above those speeds, the aerodynamic drag caused by having windows open actually makes it detrimental versus just turning on your AC. So if you're going to be driving at a, at a speed of, say, over 70 kilometers an hour, over around about 50 miles an hour, that's when you want to wind your windows up and turn your air conditioning on. But have it on a low level if you can. Anyway, those are some efficiency tips. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.